So these are the pots that I've used napkins on, and decoupaged onto. So all you need is a frost proof terracotta pot. This one I have painted with three to four coats of just emulsion paint, leaving two to four hours between each coat. If you're using a brush, make sure you do brush strokes in the same direction, otherwise you'll get brush marks that don't look very nice. I prefer to use um, a spray paint similar to this one, but in white. Um, any brand will do, but this is quite cheap and I quite like this one. And B&M do a really cheap one too. Um, and it dries quickly and you don't get any brush marks and I think it just gives a nice a smoother finish. But anyway, I've done these in emulsion. So I do the rim in a contrasting colour. So this is the napkin that I'm going to use. So I thought that goes quite nice with the purple. As you can see with these ones behind, I've picked out the pink and the flowers with this one. Poppies are grey, but I mean the, the pot's grey, but there's no grey in the poppies, but it still looks nice. And this is a teal colour, so it's picking out the blues in there. But, uh, I tend to do about five coats probably of the emulsion, again leaving two to four hours between to dry. Um, you can use acrylic paints, I've tried those, they work okay. And I've even used fence paint um, in, a, in a nice blue colour, and that, that worked well as well. Firstly, you need to separate your napkin. Napkins come in layers and if you try and put a napkin on just as it is from the shop, it wrinkles more than it would normally. So this is difficult to do, I find, but I just use my nail to ease them apart like that. And then gently do that and then I'll just move that out of the way. I like to roughen the edges of the napkin because as you can see that's that's totally straight. So if I just put that on my pot and joined up another piece to it there, you might be able to see the join. So I like to rough the edges up. So what I do is put my napkin down there. Just move over here. I just get the brush. Like that but any brush will do dip it in some water and I just draw a line all the way along the napkin like that. and then I turn the napkin and then do it on all sides you can actually buy a special pen with water in it to do this. I've not tried it, but it does look good. But this works just as well. That's a bit harder to do, I don't know. And that's the last side. So now, where you've done the water, you're just going to tear, tear down the napkin. You'll find two sides tear easy and two not so good. Yep, yeah, that came off quite nice. So it just tears down where you've done the water line. And then you're left with rough edges and they will blend together nicely you won't be able to see it so well we don't want to be using a great big piece like this anyway so I'm going to follow the natural creases of the napkin use my brush again along the line of the crease that way top to bottom and then just tear So you're left with four pieces. Yeah, just 
This is the type of brush I use to apply the emulsion. And the, I think the hardest bit is doing the rim and getting a line. I tend to get use a smaller brush. Let's see if I've got one I'll use. I like this one. It's quite flat. And I'll, around the edge I'll probably go like that. And then probably like that. You get a few brush marks, but it's not too obvious once your napkin's on. Steady hand. <laughs> right, so now I use Mod Podge, but I dare say you could use any PVA glue. I've only ever used this, so I can't comment on the others. And what you're going to do is... Let's piece your napkin. See which side of the pot... Yeah, I missed a bit there. ...that you're happy with. I'll put that this bit at the back which you want to be the front, because I find the first piece that goes on tends to be the best. So offer it up, check that it's, you know, long enough. If you had one that was longer than your pot and it was like up here, you could either trim it so it was shorter, or you could do snips like that in your napkin so that when it goes over, it folds over. Uh, we don't use a whole napkin in one go because the pot's curved. So your napkin is no way going to fit around that curved surface. So it's easy to do it in small pieces like this. I find at the corners down here, I need to make those a little bit shorter, otherwise they hang lower than the other side. I just nibble a little bit off with my nail, just a tiny bit, not too much, both sides. And then hold it up. And see, that fits quite nicely, like that. So, more podge. I just use this is, I think this is actually a children's paintbrush. Whatever you feel comfortable with, it, it helps you to put the Mod Podge on nicely. You want to do a layer so it's big enough to go cover where the napkin's going. Make sure you don't leave any gaps. You have to work fairly fast because it dries quite quickly. I do the top as well so there's room for it to go over. And to do this with the brush strokes the same way as well. Does anybody else find them their Mod Podge smells? The last bottle I had from the works, it was odourless. And I bought this one, and this one does smell, whereas I think this one is matte. Is this one matte? Oh no, it's gloss. I think my last one was matte, so maybe that's why. Right, so now we've got that on, the glue and the pot. We're going to offer the napkin up to the pot and smooth from the middle outwards. I try and layer, get it sort of, so it measures well with the bottom of the pot. You can see it's going to fit all right now. Just gently push it on with my finger there. Don't push any more. You're going to smooth it from the inside, from the middle outwards. Because if you try and smooth it, um, from all the edges if you'll get more creases and one way I do it is I just use a, a sandwich bag put my hand in it like that and from the middle outwards I'll just smooth with my hand and my fingers push it onto the glue and you get quite a lot of movement in it you can also use cling film you can use those um, bits of plastic that you put paper in and then you put into folders that works well too or you can just go over it with your decoupage brush but I find this way you get less wrinkles although I do tend to end up going over it with my brush anyway right, look at that. do this top bit over the edge you'll see I don't know if you can see there's little dots that your little natural dots that you get in the napkin when you brush with your wrap or with your brush, they will smooth out. Just make sure that you've brushed them enough to smooth them out and they disappear. 
Make sure you get the edges because you don't want those sticking up. Be gentle with it because it rips. Some rip easier than others. end up ripping it though so you have to be really careful. <laughs> Make sure you stick this edge down because that will be telltale if you don't want it. Now what you can do now is you can either leave this first piece to dry before you move on which is probably better for beginners because you end up putting your hand on your pot and you end up with it stuck to your hand and everything. But, uh, I'm going to carry on. So you'll see that this is a slanted edge so if I come to put this piece of napkin on following the the rim you'll find you've got a great big gap or you've got a great big overlap and if you stick that napkin on top of that napkin you'll get a blurry effect because you'll see both layers so what I do is I move the napkin round to match this corner here I get it so it's I'm happy with it along this rim and I fold it back like this to the edge of the pattern fold it like that then I take it off and then I use my pen brush with the water on to remove that piece of napkin where the crease is so I just go along the crease pull it off Hold it up to check. Be sure it won't get stuck this time. Yeah, that's working well. I don't bother with pattern matching simply because I'm not very good at it. And if you have a pattern like this, it's so busy that you can't really tell anyway. So again, Mod Podge the surface or PVA the surface. Careful if you touch this wet napkin because it will probably rip. Again, I go over the top, give it something to stick to. I think that's wide enough, we'll soon find out. Take your napkin again, start at this corner, get this rim ledge level, just hold it up there, don't press it on, you can usually tell by eye, that looks fine. So I'm going to press it in the middle with my bag, in my hand, and go from the middle outwards. Mess that up, it's creased. You can sometimes pull the napkin back. If you're really careful and it's not been on too long. You might need a few of these. This is getting like bits all over it now. I've used it a few times. You'll find you've got sort of bubbles where you, the glue's dried underneath. You can see there's a bubble there and a bubble there, so... Just got a bit of mud podge on my brush, gently brush over it, smooth it down like that. Check the edges are smoothed on. You can't really see that join, can you? It's not really obvious where the pattern has stopped and started again. Again, brush upwards over the top. Just making sure you get the edges pushed in otherwise you'll see those sticking out. Yeah, that looks super. This is a lovely napkin as well. This was um from Tesco. They don't sell it anymore, so when they sold it off I bought a few packets. Should have bought more really. <laughs> Alright, so again we can leave it to dry because then it's easier 
to handle if you're a beginner maybe or you can carry on like I'm going to so again you'll see this isn't straight so if I hold my napkin there you've got a great big gap so again match this corner roughly smooth it hold it along the uh, the bottom so that it's straight like that I think that's right yeah and then fold back oops where your pattern is fold it back so you don't have an overlap smooth your finger down it and you can see that's where you need to do the the, the tearing so use your wet brush along the crease you've just made and tape it off you can try ripping it freehand if you want but when i've done it it's been disastrous so i don't check before putting it on properly i'm going to rip some off this corner a little bit because it's a bit too long because obviously it's on the curve so Okay, good. I need to take some off this bottom curve here, a tiny bit. And now I'm going to paint pop the Mod Podge again. Over the top. all of it so off the edge to the corner and try and keep it straight along this rim I can just hold it and hope for the best I think it's stick can have a bit little bit of maneuverability it's overlapping a bit no, that's not too bad okay then don't allow it to stick in the middle get my bag And smooth out from the middle outwards. It can be difficult because you find it wants to stick to the glue straight away. Get my brush again. Move it over to the base. Make sure the edges are stuck down, smooth, and we're joining the edge. Just make sure I don't rip the napkins while I'm joining them together. If you find you've not gauged it very well, which I found in the beginning, and you've got, say, like a gap there, what you can do is just rip a little bit of design from your napkin, or just even a, a plain piece, and just stick it over where the gap is and smooth it with your brush. And you, you won't be able to see it. If it's a busy pattern like this, you shouldn't be able to see it. Right, turn around. Now you'll see I've got this funny shaped last bit to do so again either wait for it to dry before you do the next bit or just go for it so obviously we're going to have to shape a piece of napkin to fit there so I'll just hold it so you get perhaps that bit there Follow it along the rim, hold it with your hand, and then fold the napkin back again so you know where to dampen your, your brush with. And while I'm there, I do the other side, bend that back too. You'll find because there's a bit of glue on it, it'll hold it a little bit for you. 
I don't want it to hold it too much though. Hold that a bit and then take that off carefully and use your crease lines with your water and your brush. Take those pieces off. Just uh, hold it up, see if it's going to fit okay. The corners you might need to adjust, but in this case, don't need to, it's all right actually. So, Mod Podge it. Try and get it in the middle, line it up with the rim, as you said they've done. Okay, I'm just going to push it there with my finger so it holds it, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Try and get my smoother. Going over any wrinkles that I can see. Because those will be normal. If you find oops, if you find that you get glue on your emulsion and you wipe it with a cloth and it doesn't seem to come off, you can always go over with another coat of emulsion. Just be careful you don't splash any on your finished design. Oh, that's quite happy with that. I started with at the beginning feeling like it's drying quite well already <laughs> it doesn't take it long so there isn't that lovely so um what I'll do now is I'll probably leave that until either tomorrow or much later in the day when it's totally totally dry and not tacky to touch and then I'll give it another coat of Mod Podge leave it again we have it overnight or for a few hours give it another coat of Mod Podge, so that's two coats of Mod Podge and then uh, I'll need to seal it so it's protected from moisture because if you put soil into this pot now or you put it outside it's going to absorb the moisture from the plant and it's going to damage your design so we need to seal it with a waterproof sealer so I would ideally leave your, your Mod Podge drying for about three four weeks before you seal it but I've done it in a couple of days and it's been okay so I tend to use or well you can use a yacht varnish because that's suitable for outside and it's waterproof but you'll find that it yellows your design so whereas this has got white on it if I then cover that in yacht varnish it will give it like a yellowy age tinge and if you don't mind the age tinge that's fine and it will protect it really well but it I think it spoils it. But anyway, you could use the yacht varnish. You'd use it all over the rim, the inside. Make sure you get the inside of this drainage hole, the bottom. And I'd probably do about three coats of yacht varnish, um, obviously allowing it to dry between coats. And again, do your brush strokes in the same direction. However, what I like to use is a spray sealer because you don't get any brush strokes you can do it outside on a still day spray it leave it 15 minutes spray it again 
um, and then you can keep recoating it. I usually do about three, four coats of spray sealer inside and out, and then I'm happy that it's um, that it's safe from the elements there. This is the one I use, which is, I've used this one. This is rust, oh no, plastic coat, this one. I have used Rust-Oleum too, and they don't smell too bad. I find the cheaper ones smell worse, so you should wear a mask, really. I've got a cheaper one from Wilco, and I got one from B and M, which was I think that was about three or four pounds. That's a really good price, and that's really good. But you you don't get as much coverage from a can of spray paint than you would a tin of varnish. So bearing in mind if you're selling them, obviously you would add your seal onto your price. But yeah, I find the spray works really well. Just slow even sprays, not too close, and it dries fairly quickly too. Um, some people use the polyvine varnishes because they're supposed to be really really good. They are expensive. I've not tried them, so I couldn't comment on them. Um, and that's it, really. Enjoy doing your pots.